This presentation is entitled What do we really need? Degenerating unit on retinal vessel segmentation. My name is Velin. Most of us are very familiar with the UNET. Since published in 2015, the UNET paper has received over 12,000 citations and has been employed as a powerful network backbone for all kinds of applications. Whatever specific task you have in the field of medical image processing, reconstruction, denoising, let alone segmentation, it's difficult to avoid a comparison with the UNET and it's also not so easy to outperform it. Anyway, for the completeness of this presentation, I will still recap the network architecture. The UNET follows the typical encoder-decoder architecture in semantic segmentation. It uses pooling and deconvolution or upsampling to integrate information from different skills. The major modification is the skip connections, which combine localization information in the encoding path with the semantic information in the decoding path. The original unit has five levels and two consecutive convolutional layers in each block, and it contains over 28 million parameters. Comparably, in this work, we start with a three-level unit and it contains around 100,000 parameters. On the basis of the vanilla unit architecture, many variants are proposed. For instance, a side output layer could be added to the decoder path, providing the deep decoder with deep supervision. For a three-level unit, this modification introduces around 1,000 parameters. Another commonly used modification is to replace the unit blocks with the residual block. In each residual block, two additional convolutional layers are introduced. The residual connection adds the activation from a previous convolutional layer to a later one. Such connections allow for better gradient backpropagation. A three-level unit with residual blocks in the encoder, bottleneck, and the decoder contain over 150,000 parameters, introducing 50% more parameters comparing to the original one. The densely connected block also makes a popular modification. In a dense block, all preceding activations are concatenated into later ones. Such connections also allow for easier gradient backpropagation. A three-level unit with dense blocks in the encoding path contains 2 million parameters. This makes 20 times the amount of parameters of the vanilla unit. All these modifications aim to boost the network performance, but we propose two questions here accordingly. The first one is, are they necessary or how effective are the modifications? And the second one is, what if we go into the other direction? What if we simplify the network rather than making it more complicated? And how badly would the simplification harm the network performance? And that leads us to the topic of this work, degenerating unit on retina vessel segmentation. So, what is retina vessel segmentation? Given a colorful fundus photograph, the target is to locate and depict the vascular structures which are retina vessels from the image. Why do we choose this specific task for the unit to, de to degenerate on? One reason is that the task itself is relatively easy, well-defined and extensively studied. Another reason is that there are plenty of annotated databases for training and evaluation. In an extended version of this work, we report performance evaluation on all listed databases here. Since the same conclusions are drawn regardless of the database, we report re results from only the DRIVE database in this presentation. The DRIVE database contains 20 training and 20 testing images. 
All of them are supported with manual annotation and a field of view mask. We further separate four images from the training sets for validation during the training procedure. As for the degeneration, we start with a three-level unit with 16 filters in the initial convolutional layer. It has two convolutional layers in each block and uses RELU as the activation function. In the first experiment series, we reduce the number of convolutional layer in each block, which halves the amount of parameters in the overall architecture. Or we remove the nonlinearity introduced by the RELU layers, which does not change the number of parameters in the unit. In the second experiment series, the number of filters in the initial convolutional layer is halved from 16 to 8, 4, 2, and finally 1. The number of overall parameters decrease from around 100,000 to only around 500. Then we design an experiment series with reduced number of unit levels from 3 2 to 1 until it degenerates into a dense block. And finally, we reduce the number of training sets from 16 to 8, 4, 2, and finally 1. That's how we designed the experiments in this work. And now let's have a look at the corresponding results. We compare the vessel probability maps of different additive variants with the original unit. Honestly, no obvious difference could be observed from the visual inspection. We plot the mean and the standard deviation of the ROC scores of five repetitive experiments. Basically, the difference between the variants are within the range of standard deviation. In other words, statistically, the difference is also very marginal. As for the two subtractive variants, we see that with only convolution, one convolutional layer in each block harms the performance, but not by much, only at the scale of 10 to the minus of 3. Removing the nonlinear activation functions, however, significantly impairs the network performance. How does the network perform with decreased number of filters in the convolutional layers? We observe that the ROC score is basically stable even if the, net, the number of initial filters is reduced down to 4. With only two filters, the ROC score is still above 0 0.97. And when we only have one filter in the initial layer and the network only contains around 500 parameters, the ROC score drops to around 0 0.96. Yet, the prediction from the network still gives reasonable segmentation. As for the performance change with decreased number of unit levels, we observe that a two-level unit with only one downsampling step produces very nice segmentation results, and the ROC score is above 0 0.972. Only when the unit degenerates into one dense block the ROC score drops down to around 0.962, where the segmentation result degenerates, but it remains reasonable. Finally, what if we decrease the number of training sets? The intuition is that the model is more prone to overfit if we train with less data. We indeed observe a uniform performance decrease and uh, standard deviation increase with reduced amount of training data. With only one training image, the network somewhat captures the vascular structures, but is severely influenced with the background data distribution. To sum up, in this work, we didn't try to modify UNET for further enhancement in the network performance on the task of retina vessel segmentation from fundus images. Instead, we go into the other direction and explore how far we can degenerate the unit such that it still yields reasonable segmentation results. 
We have to admit that the conclusions from our experiment series are very surprising. With two levels, two filters in the initial layer, and one convolutional layer in each block, the IOC score of predictions in Drive database remain above 0 0.97. In other words, to achieve satisfactory performance, the unit does not need to be complicated or huge. This methodology is easy to understand and could be extended onto other tasks. Shrinking the unit or other well-performed network architectures save computational and memory cost and make it potentially feasible to perform the tasks on mobile devices. The exploration also provides us with a kind reminder that in some cases, it's not rational to pursue marginal performance improvement at the cost of huge computational resources. Thank you.